Hello, hello, and welcome to Morning Flame. I am so excited today because today is March 1st, so I love the first of any month because that's like new beginnings. Uh, first of the month, first of the week, first of anything is cool for me. And then um, I'm excited because, yeah, this is my first time diving into the word with you all. I have my little introductory video, and I did want to add on that because uh, we deal with real life. We will be talking real life topics too. I'm married, I have kids, I have a job. There's life beyond, uh, you know, I know everyone's dealing with life. So we'll also jump into practical stuff and just be able to share with each other about that. But right now we're gonna jump into God's word. And we're gonna talk about two things, where we came from and what God's thoughts are about us. So the first verse that I just wanna go to, well, first let's just start off with the creator period. So Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. So if that's something that you struggle with, you got to pause and pray right now. In the beginning, everything has a starting point, obviously, except for God. Um, but everything has a starting point. So when we talk about earth, when we talk about us, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And if you think about how we think, we have manuals for our refrigerators, for our cars, for everything. So with that being said, if we think like that, and that's been literally imprinted into our minds of how to function in this society, everything has a manual, everything has a foundation, architects have blueprints, all these different things, why would we be any different? So therefore, if you struggle with that simple truth, pause and pray. God will reveal himself. So in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, foundation of all of how you live your life and then you jump over to verse 26 we are god's crowning creation he says and god in verse genesis 126 and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle over all the earth over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so god created man in his own image in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So pause right there. Number one, we're made in the image of God. He gave us dominion and he told us to be fruitful and multiply. So when you understand that we're made in his image, with his, in his likeness, we are a mirror reflection of he who created heaven and earth. That should blow your mind. That should change the way you think about everything. That should, you should say like, okay, wow. So I'm going to go and consult my manufacturer for absolutely everything in life. There is nothing, no thing, nothing that God is trying to hide from you, especially being that he made you in his image. So when you're dealing with life, when you're dealing with trying to figure out anything, whether it be small or big, you have a creator and he made you in his image, which is like, it just should blow your mind because that means, wow, am I even living up to my highest potential? Most people are not living to their highest potential. Most people, even people who love God, who go to church on a weekly basis are not living to their highest potential because we have not grasp to the capacity that we can in our limited thought process that we are made in the image of God in his likeness we're a mere reflection of him man what does he want to do with us what does he want to do with our lives powerful okay so you have that that's principle number one that will change the way you face life from today forward you are made in the image of God he created you and he's got a manual just like we've got manuals for our washing machines, our dryers, our computers, uh, instructions or videos on everything. Boom, we've got one for life. Bible, basic instruction before leaving earth. You gotta get that down in your brain. And if you haven't decided on that as the foundation of how you live your life, pause and pray. It's just a conversation with God away to start to open up your eyes to really see from sunrise, sunset, the birds, the animals, the foods that we eat, how we're made so intricately designed. And there's a lot of stuff you have faith in that you do not see or know exactly how it's functioning or why. 
There's a lot of things in life. You can just sit back and say, you know, I turn on the computer, I don't see what's all happening, I just know this button makes it happen, right? We only know limited functions of our phones. Our phones can do so much more. Computers can do so much more. We were designed on purpose, with purpose, to do great things, even if it's not big multitude or like magnitude. It can be small, but it can be great, if that makes sense. But so yeah, so there's a lot of things we need to just, we need to go deeper as a people. So anyway, so that's number one. That is what we're diving into today. Just know where you came from. That is the foundation of how you're going to function in life, how you're gonna make decisions in life, what you find purposeful and valuable in life. All these other things are gifts from God, like finances and all those different, like all that stuff is a gift from God and, and he wants us, they have, they have their place and their role. But the foundation as to what you need to know about yourself, where you came from, is God. You're made in the image of God. Power. That's power. It's power. Okay. So that was number one. People would say then, well, why do bad things happen? And I'm made in God's image. Like, why would God make people and we have to suffer and we have to go through things? What kind of God is that? Like, what's where's the joy in that? We look around, we see all the, the magnitude of bad things happening around us. Well... That's the beauty of choice. God didn't want to create robots. God is not a robot himself. Remember, we're made in his image. So reasoning, thinking, choosing, deciding, that's part of the beauty of love. But we chose separation from God. We chose to go our own pathway. So now God is calling us back and we have a choice to make. If we want to reach our highest reach that we be reconnected reach our highest potential in life and be reconnected with the one who created us and follow this instruction people are going to say oh how can you believe the bible well there's a lot of things we read that people said that we didn't live to experience and one thing i can say personally is i've experienced the bible i've experienced it personally listen to testimonies just look up testimonies about people who love god i'm telling you you can't, God will not leave anyone who is truly seeking in the dark, which leads us to our next verse. So being that we are created by God, well, what does he think about his creation? You know, some manufacturers, they create something, they put it out, it has to be recalled. <laughs> we don't want to be recalled. But um, so we need to figure out what God thinks about us. I'm flipping through these pages. If you don't have a Bible, the beautiful thing is Google. We're going to Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29 11 and God says in 29 11 sorry I'm a little nervous for I know the thoughts that I think towards you saith the Lord this is what God this is God speaking I know the thoughts that I think towards you saith the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end another version says to give you a hope and a future it says then you shall call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you, which means I will listen unto you. And you will seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. With all your heart. So if you start, if you really want to know and you really are seeking to find out more about God and what he thinks about you and his thoughts towards you, he's not going to leave you in the dark. He said, you shall go, you shall pray, I will listen to you, and you shall seek me, and you shall find me when you search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you, says the Lord. I will be found of you, and I will turn away your captivity. Anything that separates us from God, anything that makes us think that we're not worthy of his love or makes us question God's love for mankind because of all the things that we see happening around us, God will make it plain, he will make it vivid, and he will make it clear that he is a God of love, number one. And number two, he created you with purpose. And number three, his thoughts towards you are to give you hope and a future. His thoughts towards you are peace and not of evil. Just pause and pray and ask God, okay, God, this is what she's saying. I'm going to debunk everything that I've ever heard, even what she's saying right now. And it's just me and you. And watch God move watch him work his work that only he can do he wants to give us what we can't do for ourselves you know so like i said there's people who have experienced pain who think i'm not dealing with god because why would a god who loves me allow me to go through that i'm that person i've been there before and then there's people who everything's pretty good right now they don't really have a problem 
Why do I need God? God wants to show you the full the fullness of life that he wants to give you. And then there's people who are just going through life and they're unsure. Well, God wants to show you, I have a plan, I have a way, I have a path for you that'll blow your mind. He said, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that thou never knewest. So when you go back to your manufacturer, when you go back to how that you were created by God, wow, God wants to do in you what you can't do for yourself. And like I said before, other people say, you don't know a good thing until it's gone. But sometimes you don't know a good thing until you have it. And that's God. You have experienced life through and through. But God says this, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end, to give you a hope and a future. Despite life's challenges, it doesn't say because we live in a world that is marred with people who are going to make their own choices, right? So we live in this world. It doesn't mean that you're not going to go through life. But it does mean that when you go through life, you'll go through it with a whole different perspective. A whole different thought process. You won't see it the way other people see it. You'll see it the way God sees it. You'll see it with eyes of love. When I grew up, I always thought, you know, God wants you know, fire and brimstone. God's watching me to see uh, if I'm sinning and that I'm going to have to go to hell because I'm having sex, I'm drinking, I'm smoking, I'm doing all these things. And then I was just like, you know, I, uh, I believe in God, but I'll be okay without all that judgment. I'll be okay without all that, those rules and regulations. But then when I got into relationship with God, when I thought, okay, well, what's my purpose here? It's a question that everyone should be asking themselves. Some people just are on a hamster wheel, living life day after day and some people are living life to its fullest to them but the fullness of what God has in store for you can only be found once you start in your relationship with God and it doesn't mean that God's gonna stop all the things you enjoy and send you to some desert remote island and have you wear a cape and be covered and you know like wash your whole face and everything you know all the things that we like God is not gonna take that away and say now you're going to serve me and you're going to look like this homely. No, God's people were the greatest. They were the fastest runners. They were the most beautiful. They were uh, the wisest. They were the richest. What God has in store for his people, you might go through a season of drought to get you humble or because you're not prepared. Who knows what God has in store for you? When you live for Christ, you don't know what it is, but what you can expect is joy, peace, and you can expect to be fulfilled to have like a life that you don't you don't question what's happening you ask God to I don't know you just have perfect trust I guess that's the way I would describe it you just trust that everything's always going to work out so yeah so those are the two things that I wanted to share with you today God bless you thank you so much for tuning in you know there is another verse that I'm going to quick try to slide over to in Psalm 129 and it says, and we're talking about what God thinks about us. God's thoughts towards us are joy. Like I said, I grew up thinking that God was always looking to judge me and I was always gonna be in trouble. But that's not the reality of how God thinks towards us. We are his prized creation and he loves us with an everlasting love. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting love and with loving kindness, I draw you to me. That's what God's saying to you. He's not saying, hey, stop acting up. Come to me when you're ready. Come to me all clean. No, he said, with loving kindness, I'm trying to draw you into me so you can see what it is that I have in store for you. I created you on purpose with purpose. And what I have for you, you can't get it on your own. You can't work your way to it. You can't buy your way to it. You can't figure it out on your own because you don't you're not me. You have to go to the manual. And when you go to the manual, you have to use your manual. So yeah, you have a manual, but this is God's, God's love story to all of us. His love notes that he wants to tell us, show us what to do. Tell us the different people's testimonies, things that have happened in the past, things that work, things that don't work, things we should avoid that will bring um, negativity and negative consequences to our life and things that we should embrace that will bring joy and peace. Of course, that's Christ, but other things too, like practical practical ways of living so psalm 139 is our last verse i'm flipping through this bible like i don't know where i'm going sometimes i don't um he, okay psalm 139 17 how precious also are thy thoughts unto me O god how great is the sum of them 
If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. You can't hide from God. He's right there. He's calling all of us close to him. He really loves us. He really loves you. He really loves me. And once I got that revelation and understanding, the pain and the hurt and the ideas that I had of God were washed away. And now being in relationship with him, I understand what I was missing. I understand why people on the street would be giving me little pamphlets and saying, just trust Jesus, trust Jesus. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you guys look crazy. <laughs> but now I'm going to be that person on the street handing out pamphlets and talking about God because wow you don't know what you're missing until you have it i don't care if your life is terrible you definitely need him but if your life is good and great man don't think you've reached your climax yet so you haven't reached a peak yet not until you get with christ all right well that's it for today god bless you so what i want you to walk away with is knowing that you were created by god he has purpose for you found in his good book and pray about it just pray about it god can do anything Thank you so much. God bless you all. The thoughts that God thinks towards you are peace and not of evil to give you hope and to give you a future. So tap in, tune in with God and let him do the work that only he can do in you. God bless you. Bye-bye.